Isn't it good to be out of that goddamn snow? Why are you so chipper? We're gonna be good. We are gonna be great. Faith, my son. Faith. Oi. Okay, now let's get back to this. I don't need you all up on me right now. I'm reading your poem. I'm already kind of evading your privacy. Anyway, Molly's poem, Uber Breach. I'm not sure that's how you say that. Why are you doing this? Molly. Don't interrupt me. Okay. I'm only invading your your privacy and your art. Leave it out. Okay, I guess she's walking away. Thank you, Molly. Now I'll go back to doing my thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Molly's poem, Uber Breach. I was a girl until your call commanded me to cross the sea. I've nothing left. I gave you all. My darling Liffy was so small. Your land and love vast and free. I was a girl until your call. You Holy stood so strong, dark, and tall. You stole the heartbeat out of me. I have nothing left, I gave you all. Your lips enchant, your eyes enthrall. Your empire is of ecstasy. I was a girl until your call. Your parasites and lackeys crawl, mocking a love they dare not see. I have nothing left, I gave you all. I sit in solitude and scrawl those wretched words and wait for thee. I was a girl until your call. I have nothing left, I gave you all. Pretty good poem. Definitely can see who she's talking about. And how much she thinks of the gang, for sure. Little on the nose, but that's okay. Alright, let's see. American Eden or Existence in Oblivion. Let's do American Eden. That's another Evelyn Miller, I think. American Eden, Evelyn Miller. They say that only the fool quotes himself, and I confess along with ample reserves of stupidity, I have also been cursed with an excess of vanity, so the reader will forgive me if I quote myself. The real America can only be found in desires but in the purity of its landscape. This remark is commonplace enough, but in my commonplace mind it resonated since I wrote it in a second-rate book a few years ago. What did I mean by it? When I wrote it, I did not mean very much by it. I was merely like the turn of phrase, but since this idea has captured my mind, America is a land that is captivated by its own appetites. Of that can be no doubt. We are taught to cherish only the temporary feelings of saint, sated, sated that repeated bringing upon our appetites can ensure. Yet this is not liberty. We are not free merely to choose a poison. We are free to think, to feel, and to be. We are free to live in this landscape, in this Eden, if we choose it, so be it, and live free from these unceasing desires, the very things that have plagued European man since the Enlightenment. The great sea of desires that lead to all of mankind's assorted folly here in this landscape so perfectly cherished by our native cousins. We, they and all, those who value it, are free to worship at God's truest altar, the altar of the actual America. The soil and rock and trees that make this vast and perfect place so perfect, yet we bespoil it with European delusions, the delusions that we can compete with God, that our built environment can transcend this transcend his, that our factories and the squalid conditions that arise in the towns in which they are built will somehow allow us to be happy. We are not fools, for fools cannot see their idiocy. We are somehow worse than fools, for we ourselves do the things of such profound stupidity, despite knowing that we will hate what we have built. Who likes a factory? Which man's soul was ever lifted up by a tenement building? Who enjoys seeing working men reduced to wretches and their wives and children treated not as cherished members of a family, but as an awful burden? We need better, and yet better is all around. What do you need? Better is America. By attempting to transform it into a poor impersonation of Europe, we are as Adam, eating once more of the apple, only this time knowing full well of the consequences. To free the American soul, this new world soul, we must free the American spirit from the prison in which we have placed it. We must return to the American landscape. We must seek our solace, our comfort, our very heaven in the perfection and splendor of this place. So I'm kind of glad I read this second, because he responds directly to something he said in the first book that we read. All right, last book, Existence in Oblivion. Existence in Oblivion, Nikolai Ferdov, translated from the Russian by Hubert, by Hubert Pallet. 
Chapter 47. You're wrong, brother. Very wrong. Opened the priest, sickly and pale he now undeniably was. His brother, Andrei Denzelvik, stared at him. Pride and shame intermingled in his face. Pride that he was and what he had set out to be above all. That he was the man the world saw him to be, and shame that his brother saw him so effortlessly. And with such devastating consequences for them both. All these constructed illusions, and yet underneath he was just a little boy, naked before the god he no longer quite believed in, nor could abandon. I want to hate you, Sergei Desovic, brother. I want it very badly, yet I envy you more than any man alive, he admitted. Then he turned away. I don't understand. I am sick beyond repair. I am humiliated beyond repair. What have I to envy? I am, as you yourself said, a disgrace to our family and to the motherland, said the priest. Yet... Yet you have faith. You still have faith, said his brother, Andre. I am a man set adrift. I am not even a man. I may be a gentleman, but I am no man. I am a wonderful animal, an animal in a frock coat. I have killed well, hunted well, fought well, loved women well, and yet I am not a man. Not like you. I am an animal. I live like an animal. I have the dignity, even the innocence of an animal, but I am still an animal. The lamp flickered, then it went out. They sat for a long time in a dark, silent, desolate, and suddenly overjoyed. The priest wheezed a little. More remained unspoken between them, and yet there was nothing more than Not needed to be said. Right Life at the very last made sense to him. His cavalry would be lonely and thankless. He had not. He had long known that and long accepted his fate. And yet, like others who are truly fortunate, he saw that for all his disgrace and his fall, all the trouble he had caused, his life was a thing of great joy for his life and in this moment had all that had eluded him throughout the years of his disgrace. His life had acquired grace and the light had entered into it. You know, brother, I remember when we were boys. It was you, not me, who was intended for the church, he croaked. I turned back on the nonsense in a long time ago, said his brother sadly, and yet I found only other nonsense. For you, there is still time, said his brother. For me, there is no more time, nor do I need it. I long for all that you have. I went to Paris, I went to England, I went to Copenhagen. I found nothing but idle pleasures. Pleasures that showed me that the Russian way is not the European way. That we can only find our salvation in trees and forests. And yet here I am in St. Petersburg, enjoying the life of an idle fool. Life of an idle fool. And trapped, brother, trapped. We are never trapped, said Sergey. If you learn anything from me, learn that. The spring had been a lonely one for Andrei Dezovic. A terrifying look into the void that would envelop him once unless he acted. They looked at each other calmly, both at peace and at what was now inevitable. The church bells chimed in the distance. The peasants walked home in the evening twilight. The world was both old and very, very new. Andres Dezovic knew that he must kill his brother, and Sergei, his brother, his beloved partner, the man he loved and hated more than any other, knew that he must die. He was not afraid, for this would not save his brother, his brother's family, and ultimately the estate and all its souls, the eternal life, the truer, better life awaited him, and he was happy to die. Do it, brother, he implored, his sickly yellowish eyes bright and tear-stained. Tear his brother would not look at him. His brother, who had fought the French and the British, who had won duels, was close to tears. Do what, he stammered. Do what must be done. Do what will make you a man, make you whole. Save the world. I am not afraid. You must do it. I fear nothing else aside from your cowardice. Let me know that my brother is a man, not a coward. The sickly priest said half in jest, yet both knew he was serious. A little bit of foreshadowing for later in the game. And look at that, it's night time. All this reading and we're spending the day away. Need to get the nose out of those books. All right, now that we kind of like did all the reading, we did some chores and stuff like that, we can probably get to actually getting out of here for once. We're going to change our outfit, though. First things first. Oh, nope, 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 not that, not that. This is actually a DLC outfit we got with the Ultimate Edition, but I am not going to wear it until probably the epilogue. I know it looks sick on Arthur, but with how my outfit systems work, we will probably not wear this for a long time. And yes, that means with my outfit system, I will eventually wear every single one of these outfits for a specific reason. 
So be prepared for that. Uh, we're going to modify this. Now nah, I'll keep that on. Roll that up. I like the other look more. Kind of go through all the different hats we got. Ooh, this is nice. Ah, shit. I didn't mean to do that. That's fine. That's fine. Thing is that it isn't. Well, what's the plan? I mean, after Blackwater, we don't want any more deaths. I ain't just some two-bit huckster, Jose. Hold on, I want to watch this. I'm willing to die for this if that is what it takes. But right now. I need to be left alone by all the second guessers. As you wish, my friend. Good book? I'm taking a moment, so don't you start. <laughs> I ain't starting. Okay there, Dutch. Warm, dry, and nobody's shooting at me. A marked improvement. Indeed. All right, well, I should be getting on. All right, Arthur. All right, back back to basically getting all these stars off our stuff. I'm a bit OCD when it comes to this stuff. All right, let's switch to the actual outfit we're going to have, which is the Innocent. And then we're going to put on this. And then Talismans. Since we got nothing down there, put that on so we can get the benefit. And then I'm going to roll up these sleeves. And then let's go to bed. How's it going? Getting to where Not we need good. supplies for an army. Happens to us all. Wait, how long are you gonna keep me like this? Huh? Did you send someone with the ransom note yet? Mr. Morgan! Mr. Morgan! I've noticed you've stopped paying into the box. I've been sort of busy, Miss Grimshaw. Hmm. Well, we all need to eat, Mr. Morgan. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Okay, Susan, I'll do my best. It's not like I'm doing the chores around here right now, you know what I mean? But fine, fine, fine. 
I hate it when Susan comes up to you like, you aren't doing your part as I'm carrying the giant sack across camp. It's like, yeah, I've spent a day in camp. Jesus. I will say, if you don't, like, get to the point in the game where you can start, like, getting upgrades and stuff into the box and stuff like that, it will treat it as if, though, you aren't doing anything, and it's that I little small thing. you'll betray me in the end, Arthur. You're the type. That's so. You tell me. That was strange of Dutch to say. Let's get back to actually doing some chores. Arthur. I will say, there is a noticeable difference to what people say to you and what interactions there are if the camp has low supplies versus a lot of supplies. And we're probably going to see a lot more of the sad kind of supply scenarios at the moment just because of that. Dutch. Good morning. So you can expect to get that if you don't do the story missions up until a certain point at the beginning. All right, now let's chop some firewood. And then if dominoes are still available over there, we'll play some dominoes. Just for a little bit. Um, dominoes can actually be kind of long. I actually had to reload a save. so uh, And I realized how long dominoes take. So we're just going to play a little bit of dominoes and get like a dialogue or two for whoever plays with us. And then a couple rounds just to kind of have fun with the game. And then move on. Because it's much, like, Domino's is fun, but I kind of want to move on. I just want to mostly get the dialogue and play a few rounds and just move on. I'll play the full games of Domino's when we're doing gambling challenges and trying to win at every single location. I don't really count the camp as, like, one of those locations. Because, um, you're there all the time. And you can't really get money from it. For that reason, I don't really care if I lose at the camp once as well, except for poker, because we bet money. So, I'd be damned if I'm gonna let these motherfuckers take my money. Hell no. Especially not Micah. Alright, that's the last chore. Are you mad at me? No. I'm just trying to think. Hi, Dutch. Hey. Yeah, so especially not Micah, as I was saying. But I like to play the mini games because you can get a little piece of dialogue and even some camp activities. So let's play just a round or two. Anyone gonna play some dominoes with me? Hey, why not? I'm watching you like a hawk, Matthews. What are you insinuating? I am a man of honor. You're a con man. Pretty hard to cheat at dominoes. You can cheat at anything. Well, that might be the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Okay, I like to do first person for dominoes. I think it works out. So we're not going to play a full game. We're just going to play a couple of rounds. Besides, he like I'll actually get my butt kicked. Let's see whose luck is in. When we actually play at the different locations outside of camp, I'll probably play the full games. And maybe I'll edit around and get to the really fun parts, but... For those points, we'll be doing the gambling challenges, so we'll be actually showing off an important part to 100%, really. Nothing for me. I'll pass. It's good to feel normal that again. Says it's Give you her a few minutes. Here. Not much for you here. Bessie and I would play this for hours back in the day. I remember. I think she might have even taught me to play. You know, you might be right. A lifetime ago. Sure feels like it. Ha, <laughs> well...
I will say, I remember the other type of Domino's game being a lot shorter and a lot more fun. I think it's like fives or something. Nothing past. And I think I remember it being in uh, St. Denis. So it might be to that point in the game that we uh, do a lot more Domino's playing and more particularly the gambling sure. challenges. Pass. That's a domino. You, not you're right. lucky. Yeah, luck always has something to do with this. Just wait till we get Hang to the gambling challenges, and I'll tell you how much I might. It's one of the few things in this game I do not like. Is the some, the, some of the gambling challenges, okay? And we'll get to that when we get to that. Trust me on that. And I'm sure some of you probably already know or agree with what I mean. Okay, looks like we got exhausted all the dialogue that we can get from Hosea during this game right now. So, um, we'll play one more round, and then we'll just move on. It's not about winning. It's about getting what we need and cutting and running. Like any good outlaw would do. Nothing for me. No, not me. Yes. You can have this for what it's worth. Uh, we're gonna leave. Thanks for the, the fun rounds, Hosea. You have a good day, man. Okay. Now that we did that, we did our chores. I probably cut out most of the chores now that I've shown them once. I'm probably going to do things like that more. You're going to see a lot more editing and stuff like that. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Question mark in camp. That usually means... That usually means something. Like a special conversation. So we're going to check that out. You said, Arthur. You okay, Arthur? I guess. You seem kind of worried. Of course I'm worried. What about? Our world's changing. Even I see that now. Our time is pretty much past. They don't want folk like us no more. This their rules will be damned with you. No more outlaws. No more killers. Now it's us being hunted. Oh, they ain't stopping. We went and made our choices a long time ago, so... I guess we gotta pay for our sins. Oh, Arthur. What a sad world we live in. Oh, I ain't sad, Mary Beth. I'm just realistic about what's coming. Keep thinking I should help folk, but ah, I, I don't know. Arthur, oh Arthur, you're the only one of these fools knows just how lost he is. I ain't that the truth. I ain't that the truth. All right, now we can get out of here. Whenever a question mark pops like up like that at camp, you kind of get your own little interaction. 
specially animated interaction like you would see other camp uh, companions have. So I usually like to take advantage of it when I am able. But now that we are finally leaving camp, sorry that it took me so long to do that. I like to do a lot before leaving and getting really started just to make sure I'm settled in. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Now we can head towards our first mission. We're not going to head too far. Uh, most people usually start with Uncle's mission right here, but I like to actually start with uh, Reverend Swanson's. I feel like his mission is more set up to be simplistic and uh, kind of like what is next. And once you start Uncle's mission, I feel compelled to do a bunch of other ones. And uh, what's going on here? Wanted to study that very first. It's actually the first animal in our. Come on, hold still now. I need to focus. Hey, get a hand with your horse. Sounds good. Oh Jesus! Calm down. Calm down. Shit. Hey now. Get here. Get over here. No, don't you run. Don't you run. I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep you. Cause that poor dude is probably dead. Come on, he probably broke your, his skull or something. Come on. Oh, oh Jesus! Ah! Gotcha. Yeah, it's okay. Ooh, calm, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Good. All right. Now I don't. I think this poor guy is dead. Um, so, with that being the case, we are going to loot him. We're going to lose some honor, but, you know, that's okay. Losing a little bit of honor is the worst thing, and this, this guy's not going to use it anymore, I don't think. We're also going to search this... Oh, whoa! Man, this horse is defensive. Wow! Come on now. <laughs> whoa, that's the first... <laughs> that's hilarious. I, forget, I forgot some horses can do that if you try to search their saddlebags. Alright. We're actually going to try to keep this horse. I don't know if we'll be able to once we get the mission to start storing them, but we are going to actually take this one back to to yeah. camp and hitch him. Or we get Whiskey to come along. I can't remember what I named these. Huh. Palomino Dapple. I'll have to remember that coat when I'm keeping track of all the different coats I've written. Who goes there? Arthur, you dumbass. Hope you've been good out there. So aggressive. Alright, we're gonna temporarily store this horse. I know we just left camp, but we're gonna actually try to store this horse. I don't think we'll be able to keep it. By the time that we, um... Get the, uh, stables to store horses there permanently. won't even let me search the saddlebags. It's made its choice. Alright. Okay, we're gonna keep boy. that horse here, because if we can keep that one and then bond with it once we're done with whiskey here, once we get the stables, then that will be the good next horse to get to. Yeah. Fact... Okay, just need to check something real quick. That should have been the next horse. Not the next horse, but the next uh, entry in the journal. So when you see that like journal entry updated on the right side of the screen, that means Arthur has either drawn something in his map or drawn something in his journal. I know it says journal, but it does sometimes mean means his map. Now let's hope that that horse actually stays there. If he doesn't, that's not the biggest deal. We will come across plenty of horses with that same coat. But now we actually got that updated in the 
compendium, compendium into the journal thing. You know what I'm talking about. Let's see, yada, 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 horses. American Standard Bread right here. See, we already got level one bonding with it and we got an uncommon coat. American Standard Breads are race horses identified by their agile frame, powerful limbs and healthy coat. Both black and buck skin coats are found in the wild. A Palomino Dapple and a unique silver tail buskin can also be purchased. This breed handles well, is easy to train, but can be frightened by loud noises. They are healthy, and their average stamina allows them to maintain a fast pace for a long time. So, yeah, you know, the fact that we got kicked in the face, and that guy did, and he was dead, I think just goes to show that Arthur is actually built different. So that is how we survived. For now, we're still we're still with our trusty horse whiskey here, and we're gonna keep him around. I don't think you should Whoa. just be wandering around here, friend. Not. Thing happens round here without Driscoll saying so. Understand me? Consider this a warning. You really shouldn't rile me. Ain't wise. You'll be meeting the Reaper! <laughs> I was trying to do a quick draw on them, but they pulled on me before I could actually slowly do it. Yeah, I'm not going to take any sass talk from any O'Driscolls. So let's loot them and get on our way before the law arrives. Ooh, blew his head clean off. Shit, there's somebody coming. Okay, we gotta boy. go. Yeah. Nothing happened. I know you guys heard gunshots, but nothing happened. I'm gonna save real quick. If you don't mind me doing that. You're probably gonna see me save a lot. Because a lot of shit can happen. It's just the nature of it. Swanson, you hear me? Swanson, you in here? I sure was ready for some sky shining. Reverend, where are you? Reverend! Hello. Okay, then. Mr. Morgan. I took your advice, sir. I took your advice. Then your god has finally deserted you. What you talking about? I took your advice, sir. I have removed myself from Morpheus's embrace. No more shall I sink, sir. I am free. I am free. You don't seem free, friend. You seem drunk. Sit down, Reverend. We ain't finished. You ain't finished. Look at him, he's finished. None of us force liquor down his throat, friend. I just want him to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither, but seeing I do just fine. You want to step outside or do a business here? I just want him to finish the game. Why can't we all just get along? These are good men, Arthur. They're children of God. They are children of God. How's about you playing his place, huh? That seems fair. Fair? Sure. You want a game? Sure. I'll play a few hands. Well, sit yourself down then. I'm Luther. This is Marvin. Fortunate for you both we're being gentlemen about this. Same goes for you. So, how you two know each other anyway? Don't seem like the likeliest of friends, if you don't mind me saying. 
We go a long way back. And now you're his chaperone? I guess it's something like that. Can we play? Tip for you guys. The get the gold medal. He can't be no real clergyman. And, oh. <laughs> he committed about five cardinal sins just in that chair you're sitting in. I think he used to be. He's drifted a little in recent years. Life is a challenge to all of us. Can you imagine him at the pulpit? If he could stand up. On the fourth day, he turned water into whiskey, and I don't remember much after that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a decent fella going through a bad time. Disrespect him again, and you'll find yourself in a bad time, too. All right, all right. Just trying to have a little fun here. It is a game, after all, mister. So, here. Pile of crap. Big pile of nothing. Yes, yes, yes! Damn it. You've been called. Oops. You will always win that yes, first hand, no matter what. It's the same cards all every single time. So if you're trying to get the gold medal challenge, which is win two poker hands, at least in this, you will always be able to win that first hand. And if you go all in, they will they will uh, um, call you no matter what. So there's just a little tip for that mission. I've played replayed this mission a bunch, so I just know that. After this point, it's completely random with the bullshit chances of poker that they have in this gambling game. In this gambling game, in this game, all the time. So just be aware that that is the only hand that you will have set in place. Other than that, we will attempt to win, and I will probably restart if I lose. And that is just Sometime how it is. We all grow old would be nice. Um, I'll call. Okay. Check. Check. And another check. Why don't that surprise me? This is... Oh, damn. Jesus, you play like my girl. I don't have anything. What you want me to do? We're gonna skip them playing. Better than nothing. You're gonna have fun getting him home. I always tell myself I'm unlucky, but <laughs> maybe I'm just not very good. Good. Hmm. I'm gonna play slow. Sure. Yeah. Check again? Jeez. Come on. At least make it interesting. Fold. Uh, check. I check. There. Read him and weep. <laughs> <sighs> they really like to tease you with the possibility of something in that first three cards. Dude, I don't know what it is, but gambling in this game, I think their chances mm. of you winning are skewed. That might just be me with a conspiracy because I lose a lot and maybe I'm bad at poker. But I, I see that tends to be the general agreement online. But I mean, that's gambling itself. Like, like I wouldn't. I feel like I would never actually gamble in real life with real money on the line. Unless I was like, I have $100 
and that's it. Or something like that. Like, I feel like I... I'm so afraid of the fact that, like, I would lose money based on the fact that my chances uh, in video games where there are I'll no see. consequences Check. are so slim and so crap that in real life I would go broke. Like, I, I, that's how I honestly feel. Like, I am so unlucky in these games to the point where I'm like, why would I even bother? Like... So I feel like if I went to Vegas, like... You should just go I feel, I feel like I would, uh... Be able to be like, nah. Nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna go anymore. Just because I've played these games. On video games and had shit luck. So what's that mean in the real world, you know? Okay then. Yep. I'll skip them. Aha! All right. I don't even know what he had. And let me tell you, dude. They like, like I think the theory is that in regular poker games, this might be a bit different because it's a story mission. There's one AI that just always gets super lucky and is super aggressive. Like they always get amazing cards, like all the time. Now we got a game going. And they always bet on really crap hands that they wouldn't know they have until the last card. A little of my anger showing through because it's kind of, it's suspicious. I don't know. It's it, it might just now. literally be I'm complete ass. So just take take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'll call. I'll stay in. Call. Nah. What is it? I don't got anything. I'm a check. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll skip check. along. Check, check. Check for me. Yeah, I'm just trying to move this along because um. We got other things in this mission. If this was like a regular poker game, I might not skip along. Well, even for those, I might skip along because uh, no. it, it starts just becoming Sorry small things over and over again. Pew, okay. I don't know. I might do that with a lot of these gambling games. Ah, Could have been worse. Hmm. I'll take it. Dude, nothing has made me feel more like it's the Old West than the fact that I always feel like people are cheating in poker. Let me cheat. Bring me back to RDR1. I just did a little wager. I reckon you're full of shit. Sure. I don't think. Well, I took a chance, and I don't really have freaking shit, dude. I just have a pair. But I bet you anything, the person who bet higher than me has an ace or a king. Let's see, then. There you go. Read him Nine high straight. <laughs> I tell you, dude, it is Lucky always the last down. card for these computers. Dude, I swear, the computers have to know. They have to. Because, like, I don't know. But I took that sort of chance the first hand, so maybe I'm just crazy. Tell me down in the comments if you, like, kind of are feeling what I'm feeling That's when it. playing this. I, I mean, I remember poker in RDR1. Like, you could cheat in it, right? But I never felt like that really changed. Like, it, it made it easier, but you made that investment. Like, I don't feel like I never have a chance here. I'm always getting the shin end of the stick. In poker, blackjack, and all this. Nah. I never started to notice it in poker until I stopped playing, like, um, just all in all the time and keep reloading. Until, like, I get it. Because I used to play that way exclusively. 
When I actually started to play it, I was like, man, Not anyone who's just trying to play poker is constantly getting bent over. Which we aren't on the gambling challenges yet, so. Have a look at these. Pile of Where was that? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Dude, the flush always surprises there me. Here we go. All right. Let's turn this around. You lucky son of a bitch. Watch, they're all gonna fold. They're all gonna fold. Okay. Gonna start small here. I know. Alright, I have a good hand. Jeez, I should realistically have a high chance of winning. Let's start this low for now. Here. An ace and a jack. They're not the same suit, but those are two very, very high cards. So I'm hoping to God I actually get something decent here. Okay, look at this. We are a queen away from having an ace, a uh, 10 to ace straight. All right, now I am going to bet and they are going to Play fold. Safe, huh? Damn it. All right, one is reasonable. Here. This one's raising, he has something good. He probably has a king. That's what I got. He's bluffing. Yep, interesting. All right, I'm trying to play this game where I'm going to like All right, I'm 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 winning. All I'm winning. There's no way I lose this. There's no way I lose this. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to Okay, there is a way I lose this. I don't know if a flush beats a straight. Does it? I actually don't know. All right. Oh, thank got... God. Okay. Here. Thank Look. God. Huh. Well, gentlemen, time to move along. Oh, hell. You're one lucky son of a bitch, you know that? Oh, I'm surely a son of a bitch, but lucky? <laughs> I ain't so sure. Come on, you. Let's move along. Where is he? Who? The Reverend. Where'd he go? I don't know. Ah, oh, shit. Excuse me, gentlemen. Reverend! Reverend Swanson! Where'd you go? Excuse me, I'm sorry. You, you see a drunken idiot, a priest, wandering about? Sure, we saw him, smelt him, and avoided him. <laughs> he went that way, I think. Thanks. I look kind of crazy, mister. Have you lost your mind? Get your hands off him. I didn't say a word. You'll keep. You stay out of it. Get your hands off him now, you son of a bitch. Uh, 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 I'll kill you both. Uh, uh, you bastard. Uh, oh, my God. I didn't kill him. What are you talking? No. Hey, you. Get back here. You better stop right there. Stay away from me. Stop, you son of a bitch. Stop, or I'll kill you. I swear. I said stop, damn it. Yep. Okay. Okay. I, I won't tell don't hurt me. I promise. Uh, yeah, get out of here. Good. Get the hell out of here. Now, you promised me. I thought about robbing him, but that didn't really seem worth it. Reverend! Get off the damn tracks! I think in the past I've robbed him, but it's just like, yeah, he's already scared to death. Let him let him just have his money. You crazy? Mm. 
Come on, my friend. It's just a simple mistake. You can still be saved. Huh? You done with your foot? It appears to like this place. I want to stay. Get your foot out of here! Twist your leg, you drunken bastard! Get it! Come on! Thank you, sir! Oh, 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 oh no, you don't! What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Throwing me off a bridge like there that! There was a goddamn train, you crazy bastard! <sighs> Have I been bad again, Mr. Morgan? I'm sorry. Uh, I wish I was different. <laughs> Let's get you home. Home? Yeah. That's a wonderful idea. I could have tea with Margaret. Margaret? Who's Margaret? But... <laughs> wonderful. You better sleep your way to salvation, my friend. Oh, what happened? Just the usual. Poor <laughs> bastard. Exactly. Well, thank you, Mr. Morgan. I'll keep an eye on him. He was lucky this time. Real lucky. Okay, I don't know if this, uh, ooh, did we get gold for this? Did we get gold? We did! Nice, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is how you get gold. I don't know if this... Feels like we're back on track, more or less. Yep, money and food. Now everyone needs to keep it comfortable. For sure. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Let's have some coffee. Now, I don't know if this song is copyrighted. In the background, so I'm gonna try to talk over it. Bored. Bored good. Bored means you ain't scared. Grateful for being bored, lady. Soon enough, you're gonna be scared. When I was a little girl, I guess I hoped for. I don't know. I used to dream a lot. We all drank a lot. We were going to women. That's all the world was for us. A little of that uses. Okay. 
cheer up. Smile. Don't forget about that. Okay. Either that or start praying real hard. Glad to be off that mountain, Mr. Pearson. Yes, indeed. Lots to do now. Yeah, for all of us. Hey, Arthur. Now we are not starting Hosea's mission yet. We are, however, going to feed our horse because he's been a very good boy. Who's a good whiskey? Who's a good whiskey? Yeah, good boy. Yeah, okay, boy. Good to see you. How are you doing, Mary Beth? <sighs> Cold and bored. Well, there's a stew coming. We found some deer. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Sure thing. <laughs> 